Hey, it's me, Steve. It is July 24th, 2017. Time is 1145. Temperature is 71 degrees Fahrenheit out. It's actually been, the past couple weeks, it's been pretty hot out, but um, it's actually decent today. Now, this is a geo rant, and today I'm just going to talk a little bit about this rock right here. Sarah Hall found this when we were on trans or on Ontario route uh, 101 somewhere between Champlo and Pajols Provincial Park and I just love this rock I'm actually doing something to this rock that I usually don't do to rocks I'm actually going to put this in a computer generated mode and um, what I'm going to do is analyze in detail. I have not done that yet. But what I can tell you about this rock is that these bit, like this white one here, this one here, these, this is all plagioclase. Specifically, it looks like anorthosite. I haven't looked at it under hand lens, but, the, but these streaks in the crystal structure is very consistent with that. Um, the crystals look broken. And weathered some of them have pink outlines which is weathering um, there's also a lot of stuff in here that's light gray and that's opaque gray that's actually quartz but if you look at the ground mass of this by the way this is a natural rock this is not man-made I know some people might think it is but it's not it, it was found it was found in an intrusion a, a dike or a thick dike I believe it was but you can see this uh, ground mass the dark gray part most of it from here up seems to be a uh, biotite um, from here down the ground mass like right in this area I can't really tell what it is uh, I'm gonna have to look at it under hand lens my guess is it's either peroxine or olivine uh, and right down here you have this area where you have a lot of anorthosite and quartz mixed in this tiny little bit right here which is kind of grades into this which is uh, has alkali feldspar in it, um, and is much smaller grained, and is likely some sort of monzonite or something. I don't know. I got to look at it in detail. I wish I remember exactly which outcrop it was. I'm going to refer to my notes to see exactly which one it was from. But you look at this rock, and it looks like a lamp porphyry. Now, I'm going to talk about lamb porphyries because they're unique among rock. Uh, I mean, th this is obviously a plutonic intrusion. Um, it's coarse grained. I mean, it's got pegmatitic sized crystals in it. Now, lamb porphyries are kind of hard to classify. No one's really come up with a good classification scheme. This paper is sort of like the Bible of it. Um, but I am not very familiar with lamb porphyries. I know what they look like. But detail, I mean, there's, I mean, the classification scheme is, it's, uh, it, 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 even though this paper is 21 years old, we still haven't figured out a good classification scheme. And the reason being is because of all the, uh, the associate, like, I mean, there's a lot of biotite in this. That's a good percentage of the rock. I don't know yet how much it is. I can, only thing I can tell you at a glance is that the uh, plagioclase, uh, the anorthosite, is probably about 20 to 25 percent of the rock. Um, and the quartz is probably comparable. Um, so they're just difficult to classify. And uh, usually what we use uh, to classify coarse grained uh, rocks is a. Uh, Oh, I cut it. No, I drew down some. Of the, we use a uh, QAPF diagram, which is a quartz alkali feldspar plagioclase felspazoid uh, triangular charts. The two triangles, one's upside down, glued to the bottom, and the other one. And I personally think you can use that for this. So I don't even know if this is a true lamp porphyry or not. Um, they are associated with gold deposits. There's no gold in this rock. You might see some shiny, flaky stuff, but that's all biotite. It's mica. So, um, but, um, and the reason why I believe that white stuff is anorthosite is because it's weathering out even faster than the biotite is. And here we have a, a Goldich's weathering series explained in terms of bond strength. This is something I pulled from online. As you can see, if you go from here to up, uh, greater susceptibility to chemical weathering, anorthosites 
up here. It's high up here. It's not even that much lower than aragonite. Aragonite is a form of carbonate that weathers pretty quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, and the only thing really above that is salt. <laughs> and, you know, you put salt in water, pretty much it's gone. So, uh, yeah, and as you can see, quartz doesn't weather out that much at all. Um, so that's what makes me think it's anorthosite. Um, I just, I just think this rock is really cool. Uh, you look at the backside. Yeah, the, the pink halos around the anorthosite are can do so. I mean, anorthosite can be white, gray, or reddish. So uh, it's not surprising that it's there. But the fact that they are there and are only around the rims, and, and the fact that these are not actual anorthosite crystals, even though you can see huge fabrics of crystal like going through is that this seems that this was probably ripped up from an existing anorthosite deposit or something and redeposited and whatever this rock was it took a long time to cool um so the anorthosite could actually be uh inclusions within this i don't know like i said i gotta look at it more carefully here you can see the mica a little better the shininess of it um like yeah, so this rock's going to be very interesting, and I'll let you know when I figure out exactly what it is, and hopefully we can find where it came from, because like I said, Sarah picked it up, I didn't, but I, I think I know which outcrop it was from. But anyway, that's my rant, and I hope you learned something.